Hey guys, today, we'll recap the drama and romance movie Anna Karenina. The story unfolds in 1874 during the peak of Imperial Russia, commencing at the residence of Prince Stepan, Steve Oblonsky in Moscow. Steve's wife, Princess Daria, also known as Dolly, catches him doing the deed in a closet with the governess of their five children. Upon discovering a note from the governess to her husband, overwhelmed with emotion, Dolly expels Steve from their home, decreeing that he should never see her or their children again. Meanwhile, Steve's sister Anna Karenina embarks on a journey to Moscow. Anna is a wealthy and admired socialite residing in St. Petersburg with her older husband Alexei Karenin, a prominent Russian statesman, and their son Sir Oja. Anna undertakes this trip at her brother's request to mediate with Dolly and persuade her to forgive Steve. Although Karen permits her to leave, he cautions her about intervening in the affairs of others. However, Anna disregards his warning and proceeds to Moscow, leaving behind her son Sarosha, who wishes for her to stay. In the meantime, Steve reunites with his old friend Konstantin Dmitrievich Levin, a wealthy landowner residing in the countryside. Levin's disinterest in city life earns him disapproval from most of Moscow's elite society. He confesses his love to Steve's sister-in-law, Katerina Kitty, and Steve encourages him to propose to her. However, Kitty declines Levin's proposal. It becomes evident that Kitty's rejection is linked to her desire to marry Count Alexei Vronsky, which would elevate her to the status of a wealthy countess socialite, much like Anna. During her train journey to Moscow, Anna encounters Vronsky's mother, Countess Vronskaya, known throughout Russia for her extramarital affairs. Meanwhile, Levin meets up with his elder brother Nikolai, another aristocrat who has relinquished his inheritance to live a reckless life. Nikolai lives with a woman named Masha, with whom he has entered a marital-like relationship. Nikolai suggests to Levin that he should marry one of the peasants working on his estate. Afterward, Levin returns to his country estate in Pokrovsko. Upon Anna's arrival in Moscow, she meets Count Vronsky, and they are immediately drawn to each other with a mutual attraction. As they are about to leave, a tragic incident occurs where a railroad worker is fatally trapped beneath the train tracks. To impress Anna, Vronsky decides to provide financial support to the deceased man's family. Anna successfully persuades Dolly to reconcile with Steve. Later that evening, at a grand ball, Kitty shines radiantly and dances with numerous aristocratic men. As Kitty follows her dance guard, she hopes to dance with Vronsky, but he chooses to dance with Anna instead. Their chemistry does not go unnoticed, and Kitty becomes upset. Observing Kitty's discomfort, Anna feels she has overshadowed her and decides to leave the ball. Anna boards a train bound for St. Petersburg. However, during a rest stop, she notices Vronsky, who declares that he cannot bear to be apart from her and will follow her wherever she goes. Anna tells him to return to Moscow, but he refuses, determined to stay with her no matter what. In St. Petersburg, Vronsky visits his friends, including his cousin Princess Betsy Verskaya, who shares mutual friends with Anna and Karenin. Vronsky starts frequenting the same places Anna and Betsy visit, and their attraction becomes evident to everyone. Anna finds it both amusing and embarrassing, as their high society friends begin to notice their growing affection for each other. During a party hosted by Betsy, Vronsky assumes Anna hasn't attended because of him and leaves, only to realize later that Anna arrived late. Betsy informs Anna about Vronsky's departure, trying to ease her concerns about causing a scandal. However, Vronsky returns and openly flirts with Anna. The party guests gossip behind their backs, and this draws Karenin's attention. He suggests they leave the party immediately, but Anna decides to stay, despite the disapproving looks from others. Vronsky contemplates taking a promotion in another city, but Anna implores him to stay. Upon arriving home, Anna discusses Vronsky with her husband, denying any attraction and convincing him of her innocence. They go to bed, but the next day, Anna and Vronsky meet at a hotel and make love with each other. Meanwhile, back at Levin's country estate, Steve visits and reveals that Kitty and Vronsky are no longer planning to get married. Still heartbroken, Levin decides to focus on living an authentic country life. He works alongside his laborers, plowing the fields and contemplating the idea of marrying one of his workers' daughters, as his brother had suggested. Karenin receives information that both his wife and her lover are in the country and decides to surprise Anna at his country estate. Anna reveals to Vronsky that she is pregnant and expresses her desire to be with him exclusively. While heading back to her country house, she unexpectedly encounters Karenin, who suggests joining her for the evening horse races. The racing event attracts all levels of Russian society, and Anna sits among the elite. Countess Vronskaya, hearing the rumors about her son and Anna, looks disgusted and shifts her attention to the young princess Orukina. During the races, Karenin notices Anna behaving strangely whenever Vronsky is racing. Her emotions unintentionally come to the fore when Vronsky's horse collapses and gets injured, and she reacts intensely. On their way home, Anna confesses to Karenin that she is indeed Vronsky's mistress and expresses her desire for a divorce. However, the conservative and hypocritical elite of St. Petersburg, combined with the Russian divorce process's public humiliation, leads Karenin to refuse her request. Instead, he confines Anna to their house to maintain appearances. Vronsky insists that Anna divorce her husband, and Anna, despite acknowledging the challenges, assures him they will find a way. 
While plowing his field one morning, Levin sees a carriage with Kitty and decides to return to Moscow to insist to Steva that he must marry her. In St. Petersburg, Anna, showing signs of her pregnancy, receives Vronsky at her house and berates him for not coming to her sooner. Vronsky, taken aback by Anna's changed temperament, explains that he was fulfilling his duties as an officer. Karenin returns home to discover that Vronsky has been visiting Anna, despite being forbidden to be near her. Karenin searches Anna's desk and finds love letters, providing evidence of her infidelity. Fueled by anger, he declares that he will divorce her, take custody of their son, and cast her out. Anna pleads for her son to stay with her, but Karenin, enraged, insists that he will never allow his son to be with an adulteress mother. Meanwhile, Levin and Kitty are reunited at the Oblonsky house for dinner. Karenin arrives there to announce that he is divorcing Anna, much to the dismay of Steva and Dolly. Anna implores Karenin to forgive her, but he remains resolute, though it is evident he still loves her. After dinner, Levin and Kitty confess their love for each other and eventually marry. Karenin receives a distressing message informing him that Anna is in critical condition due to premature labor and is nearing death. Despite the news, Karenin tears the card and returns home. At Anna's bedside, Karenin witnesses her sincere confession of her sins before God and her acknowledgement of being in the wrong. Vronsky is present, and Anna berates him again, emphasizing that he can never compare to Karenin. Overwhelmed with guilt for his past treatment of Anna, Karenin pleads for her forgiveness, and she grants it. The following day, Vronsky departs as requested by Karenin. Karenin develops a deep attachment to Anna's baby Anya, cradling and caring for her as if she were his own child. Princess Betsy visits Anna and discusses Vronsky's future now that he has returned to Moscow. Anna notices Karenin in the doorway and invites him into their conversation. She instructs Betsy to share with Karenin everything they have discussed. After the conversation, Karenin returns to Anna, deeply moved and upset. Anna expresses her wish to have died instead, as she now has to live with Karenin while constantly hearing about and seeing Vronsky, especially with their child together. Despite Karenin's assurances of their future happiness, Anna only longs for Vronsky. However, Karenin remains resistant to the idea of a divorce but releases Anna from her confinement. Anna communicates with Vronsky through a telegraph, and the two of them, along with little Anya, leave for Italy. Meanwhile, Levin and Kitty return to Levin's country estate, where everyone is captivated by his new wife. Levin's maid informs him that his brother Nikolai and his wife Masha have arrived in the country seeking solitude as Nikolai's health is deteriorating rapidly. Believing Kitty would be alarmed and outraged by the situation, Levin is surprised to find that she compassionately suggests inviting them to their country estate and offering to nurse Nikolai. Levin is taken aback but notices that Kitty has matured and now prioritizes others' well-being over her own. News reaches Countess Lydia that Anna and Vronsky have returned to St. Petersburg. Anna writes to Countess Lydia, seeking her intervention to arrange a meeting with her son Sir Ogier on his birthday. Anna visits Sir Ogier and expresses her love for him, admitting her past mistakes. She urges him to love his father, Karenin, as he is a good and kind man, far better than she could ever be. Karenin witnesses their interaction and motions for Anna to leave, which she does, returning to Vronsky's hotel room. Vronsky arrives late, causing Anna to worry that he might be unfaithful. Despite her concerns, Anna decides to attend the opera, boldly asserting that she is not ashamed of her actions and neither should Vronsky be. However, the attendees at the opera react with disgust and amusement, making Anna realize that society still disapproves of her relationship with Vronsky. One person starts a commotion and insults Anna verbally, leading to her humiliation, though she manages to maintain her composure in public while shedding tears later at the hotel. Vronsky rushes to her side, but she becomes upset with him for not stopping her from going to the opera. He tries to soothe her by offering laudanum with water. The next day, Anna faces further rejection from society as the women at a restaurant ignore her and actively avoid her company. Dolly, however, approaches Anna and shares news of Kitty's pregnancy and Steva's unchanged behavior. Despite their past differences, Dolly expresses that she has come to love Steva for who he is and misses Anna's companionship. Meanwhile, when Anna returns to the hotel, she notices Vronsky reading a letter, but he hides it from her. Anna tells Vronsky that she does not want to think about divorce or other matters. She simply loves him and is willing to go wherever he goes. Vronsky mentions that he needs to meet with his mother one last time to settle some matters. When Anna sees Princess Sorokina picking him up to take him to his mother, she starts losing touch with reality. She drinks more laudanum and asks her maid to dress her before deciding to go by train to confirm if Vronsky is truly with his mother. As she stops from station to station, Anna's mind is filled with thoughts of her son, her daughter, Karenin, and she begins to experience hallucinations. She envisions Vronsky and Princess Sorokina making love and mocking her. As the train reaches the last station, overwhelmed by her emotions and tormented by her visions, Anna cries out, God forgive me, before tragically throwing herself onto the tracks, directly in the path of an oncoming train. Later, Levin is deeply moved by Kitty's compassionate heart and her willingness to help his brother, making him realize that love, even in its early stages, can blossom into something profound and genuine. He also starts to believe that fate is a manifestation of God's plan and feels immensely blessed to have Kitty and their newborn son. 
On a rainy day, Levin returns home to find Kitty bathing their baby boy. Levin shares with her that he has come to a profound realization, promising to tell her about it someday. Meanwhile, Oblonsky and his family join Levin and Kitty for a meal. Oblonsky appears worn and sad, and it can be inferred that he might be grieving for his sister's tragic fate or possibly contemplating a change in his former adulterous lifestyle. On the other hand, Karenin is shown to be content and at peace in his retirement from public responsibilities. Sarosha and Anya, now toddlers, play happily amidst the daisies in the field. What a very sad and tragic ending. Anna really went down a spiral thinking Vronsky was cheating. She truly thought that jumping in front of a train was the only escape from her unhappiness. What did you guys think of the movie? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.